Welcome everyone. This is Your Catholic Faith Reloaded, episode number 10. I'm Father Nelson Medina. I'm from Colombia, this time broadcasting from Bogota, the beautiful capital city of Colombia. You're most welcome, I'm your host. In this program, in this podcast, Your Catholic Faith Reloaded, what do we do is to visit the very foundations of our Catholic faith. And the first sections, the first programs were all about truth, because it is very important to realize that our Catholic faith is not about fantasy, it's not about uh, fables, uh, imagination, no, no. We seek truth. Um, you probably, uh, you don't like that expression, but that's exactly what we all, we all uh, long for, truth. Nobody, nobody, nor you, nor me, nobody would like to be deceived. Or would you raise your hand and to say, hey, I, I prefer to be deceived. No, probably we don't have, we don't get the complete truth about a particular subject but we look for what is true. That was the first section, the first programs of this podcast where they all were about truth. And then we, move, we moved on to the most important thing in our faith, which is coming to know God. And, and, and I regard very important to, to, to see that Coming to know God is not like putting a microbe, this is my constant metaphor, is not like putting a microbe under the scrutiny of a microscope. How do you know your friends? How do you know your relatives? Interacting. It is the relationship. It is because you have spent time with your friends, with your parents, with your siblings, that you dare to say, I know them. Probably you can uh, grow into the knowledge of that particular person, but definitely it is the relationship that makes possible to say, I know that person. Okay, the good news is that it's all the same with God. It's all about the relationship with God. And that relationship does not begin with you, does not begin with me. That relationship takes a special name. It is the revelation. In what sense it is a revelation? Well, it is really the history of the people of God. So there is a people, an elected people, and everything that was happening to them was the means for them and also for us to, to come to know God. And certainly they were not prone to believing and they were not an easy people nor are we, but God, so to speak, walking together, making the journey together with that people, the elected people, both in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament, revealed himself and the testimony, the reading testimony of that walking together is what we find in the Bible. So first, milestone, truth. We are looking for truth. Second, milestone, the Bible, as the written testimony of that journey that God has made with his people. This is the testimony that is the basis, is the very foundation of everything we say about God. But that people of God did not 
vanished, did not disappear when the Bible was uh, finished. I mean, when the last book of the Bible was written, that people of God did not disappear. No. <clears throat> and they have not only the testimony that was eventually put in writing, they also have the testimony of the very witnesses, chiefly the apostles. The apostles and that first generation of Christians and the communities that are called the churches, the communities of that first century AD, those communities had the living testimony of what entails to be a believer and what exactly we believe and how we worship and how we lead our lives. And then that, that testimony, which is not entirely written, because you, can, you cannot write everything of your life. Think of your own family. You cannot take every detail of your family and then put it in writing. That's not possible. Suppose that we, <laughs> that we would attempt to do so. So um, every morning we greet each other and we hug um, uh, one another and um, uh, the spouse um, kisses the spouse. We don't put everything in writing. We lead our lives, we continue our lives and uh, in a beautiful contagion, in a beautiful contagion of life, Life is transmitted, and with it, traditions, liturgy, morals are transmitted. Transmitted in Latin is said tradita, tradita. Things are tradita, which means transmitted, and they pass on, they are passed on from generation to generation. And in that passing on, you have the essence of what we call tradition, tradition. Tradition, so, is not an additional book alongside the book of the Bible. Tradition is another name by for the transmission of life within the people of God. And that transmission of life, of course, of course, consists in teaching and liturgy and morals and pastoral care and taking also good care of the needy and the life of the church. And life, I repeat myself, is impossible to put all together in writing. And that's the, the essence of the message that we have today. Look at this. The Bible and church traditions together make up what we call the deposit of faith. The collection of our beliefs and teachings as handed down to us from Jesus himself. Who can legitimately interpret our teachings. Bishops, in unity with the Pope, have received the authority from Christ, passed on to them from the apostles to rightly and correctly guard and teach the truths of our Catholic faith. So you see, this is life passing on from generation to generation. You cannot say, well, I received, I, I just received the, the Bible from the first century, like flying over the centuries. No, you receive the Bible and you receive the life of the church from the church herself. The bishops 
are the successors of the apostles. And in unity with the Pope, the direct successor of St. Peter, they are called the magisterium, that is, the teachers of the church. So the Catholic Church, under the leadership of her bishops, has the authority of Jesus Christ to speak in his name. The Catholic Church continues the work of Jesus himself under the, the, the direction of her bishops, teaching, shepherding, and forgiving sins. The word Catholic is a Greek word which means universal. It was first applied to the church, but by St. Ignatius of Antioch, one of the first bishops of the Catholic Church. And now you have on your screen some questions that are very interesting for a dialogue, for meditation. Where does the authority of bishops come from? What three things are they giving authority to do? And what is the most important thing? What is the deposit of faith? So that's the very summary of this lesson, the deposit of faith, which is the Bible and then the living tradition of the church and the authentic interpretation that is given by the bishops as successors of the apostles of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and thank you. Thank you as always. Thank you for being here.